So notes are named A to G in Western music, but as we've been seeing, notes are more like numbers rather than letters. A is 27.5 or 55 or 110 or 220 and so on. This group of numbers is A. 196, 392, those are G's. And just like how the notes in themselves have names, the distances between notes, also known as intervals, also have names. We've already seen one interval, the space between one A and the next, or one C and the next. What was that called? The octave. The octave. So the octave is an interval. And we called it an octave because we count up eight notes from where we started from to find the distance we are looking for. So A to A is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. And we count eight. That gives us the same note an octave higher, or in other words, double the pitch we started from. So if I play this B, and then this B, which is the next one along, what interval have I played? An octave. An octave. And if this B vibrates 30 times a second, how many times does the B an octave higher vibrate? 60. 60. The space or interval between notes is what has communicative power in music, or rather the power to impart experience, rather than the notes in themselves. And so the names of intervals are arguably even more important than the names of notes, which is why if you listen to musicians speak about music, you'll probably notice them speak much more about octaves or perfect fifths or major thirds, which are intervals, then about notes, like C or C-sharp. So the interval name describes the space of the interval, the space between two notes, with a number, as in octave, meaning eight, and to some degree, the name will also describe the sensation of experiencing the interval. So we said an octave is also called a perfect octave, although most people just say octave for short. Perfect describes the sensation of the two notes sounding harmoniously as if they were one. So for example, these two C's. So octave relates to eight. So these two A's are an octave apart. This A is an octave higher or is the octave of this A. What do you think the perfect fifth of an A might be? If we counted eight for an octave, we'll count five for a fifth. We include the letter we begin on, so A. A, B, C, D, E. E, yes, an E. A, B, C, D, E, we count five. So the perfect fifth of A is E. So the perfect fifth of this A is this E. We call this fifth perfect because just like the octave, or perfect octave rather, a note and its perfect fifth can blend together very harmoniously, losing themselves in one another and sounding as one. There I'm playing two violin strings at once, but they can sound as one because the perfect fifth falls right in the middle of the octave. So if I play this A at 220 hertz, and this A at 440 hertz, how many hertz does this E, which falls between them, have? 330. Yes, 330. So the perfect octave and the perfect fifth are the two strongest relationships we can have between two notes. In mathematical terms, we are either doubling to get the octave or timesing by 1.5 to get the perfect fifth. Again, this is why these notes blend together so well. So here's A and E together. They also kind of sound like one note, no? So that describes the sensation, the perfect sensation, which is why it's a perfect fifth. 
So it's difficult to describe musical sensations in words because music precisely is a different type of communication to language. So we can't really translate the experience of music, only describe it haphazardly. But if, for example, we play A and E apart or together, we might say that this sounds open, bright or simply right. How exactly it sounds will depend on the context we hear it in. And like I said, optimistic, bright or any translation of music just will never hit the nail on the head when it comes to the musical experience. But generally speaking, we might describe this interval as something positive or right sounding at least. That goes for if we're playing the two notes separately or at once. We are still experiencing the same perfect fifth interval. We are hearing two different notes, A and E, get along as well as any two different notes can. Now, if we play an A and then an E flat, we lose the perfect fifth. The harmony is no longer perfect, and these two notes generate a sensation that changes drastically from the last. So this new fifth that we hear, between A and E flat affords such a different sensation to the perfect fifth. Not because the E flat in itself sounds pessimistic or dark as a note, it is about the relationship between A and E flat. If we lower the A to an A flat, we get the perfect fifth interval again, and the same sensation we had with A and E returns. That was A flat and E flat, and if we compare that to A and E, the sensation of the interval is the same. Even though it sounds different because the notes are different. The interval sounds the same. We've got the perfect fifth again. So we can really see how intervals, the spaces in pitch between notes, the distances in pitch between notes, are much more important in music than the pitches in themselves, than the notes in themselves. It's the intervals that notes create that make us feel. So this E flat doesn't sound particularly happy or sad, positive or negative in itself. It depends on its context. It depends what interval or intervals it is forming part of. A little like words, notes have meanings depending on their context, depending on the notes surrounding them. If I play just... It's not especially meaningful or moving. But in this context... Then it hits a spot. After these notes, this note has a mathematical significance it doesn't have by itself. So let's recap what we've learned. This A here vibrates at 440 hertz. If I shorten the violin string by half by pressing in the middle, we now have double the vibrations. What is the interval between our two A's chord? An octave. An octave, or rather a perfect octave, which we can find by counting up eight. If we count up five from A, what did we get? E. An E, the perfect fifth of A which falls in the middle of the octave. It falls in the middle of two A's. And how many hertz does that E have falling between an A at 440 hertz and another at 880? The E in the middle? 660. 660 hertz, which happens to be the next string on the violin. So the violin is tuned in perfect fifths. Each string is 1.5 times the last. So let's go back to the lowest string of the violin, which is also its thickest string, creating slower vibrations. It vibrates 196 times a second, giving us a G. 
If I shorten the string in half by pressing in the middle, we now have 392 vibrations per second. What is the relationship between 196 and 392? It's half. 196 is half of 392. So what note does 392 hertz give us? Still a G. Another G. Now we know the next string here, the next string on the violin, is the perfect fifth of G. So it will be exactly between 196 and 392. You don't have to worry about working out the hertz, but you can tell me what note this string is just by counting five up from G. E. Including G when you count five. G, A, B, C, D. D. What was E the perfect fifth of? E. Bravo. Very good. So the perfect fifth of G and so the next string on the violin is a D. Vibrating at 294 hertz. One and a half times 196 is 294. The next string is an A, vibrating at 440 hertz, which is 1.5 times 294, the previous D string. So what is the relationship of the interval from D to A? A perfect fifth. Another perfect fifth. And we find another perfect fifth from A to E, which is our last and thinnest string on the violin. 440, 660. So the violin is tuned in perfect fifths. G, D, A, E. So the octave or perfect octave and the perfect fifth are the two most important and fundamental tonal relationships, the most important intervals. The perfect octave and the perfect fifth, or in other words, timesing by 2 and timesing by 1.5. This means that these notes are likely to occur together. When we have a lot of A in a piece, we'll have a lot of E. When there's a lot of G, there'll be a lot of D. But this doesn't just go for music, but for the physical world too. Let me explain. Whenever something vibrates and generates a sound, so when we play this A, for example, causing the violin string to vibrate 440 times a second, the string doesn't just vibrate as a whole, but also in fractions. The vibrations making the string vibrate as a whole travel the length of the string, bounce back on themselves and cause the string to vibrate in two halves, in three thirds, in four fourths and so on. So other than vibrating as a whole, the violin string is also vibrating in parts, in sections. This creates what we call overtones. And the first overtones of any note present us with the very important musical intervals we have already learned. So let's go back to our A string. This string vibrates as a whole at 440 hertz. But we now know that apart from that, much quieter, other vibrations can be heard as the string subdivides itself. So apart from as a whole, the string is also vibrating in two halves. Those are vibrating at double the original frequency. So at how many hertz are those two halves vibrating? 440. This is 440. Oh, so 880. 880. 880. And what note is that? The same. Another A. An A. So the first overtone of an A is just another A, an octave higher. And now we know why playing one note on the piano and then playing it with its octave is pretty indistinguishable. The octave is already audible in the original note. So the octave, this note is already occurring inside this note. If we look what's going on when the string divides itself into three equal vibrating parts, we'll find something else interesting. So when the string divides itself into two equal parts, those parts vibrate at double the original frequency. When it divides itself into three parts, those parts vibrate at three times the original frequency, or what we call the fundamental frequency. Now to find out what note that is, we can do something simpler than timesing 440 by 3. As we know that doubling and halving in music gives us the same result, we can times by 1.5 instead of 3 as a shortcut. 
There we've halved 3. So what is 440 times 1.5? 660. 660. Do you remember what note 660 gives us? Uh, no, an E? An E. Well done. <laughs> if the number isn't familiar, you can try doubling or halving it. What is half of 660? 330. Maybe that rings a bell more than 660. But you can work in this way always in music. If you know one value, you know them all. And what is the relation of E to A? Or in other words, what is the interval between A and E? A perfect fifth. A perfect fifth. So in the first two overtones of A, we find the octave and the perfect fifth. Coincidentally, or not at all, our two most important musical intervals. So in this mind-boggling way, we really see how music seems to create itself. Before it's anything, it's already everything. Within one note, we find other notes. Within a single note, we find octaves and perfect fifths. We find intervals within one single note. We find music, yet, as we've seen, it is the relationship between notes, intervals which give us musical experience, not single notes in themselves. The note by itself is extremely limited in what it can communicate, yet the musical experience is contained within a note, within a frequency, or at least its potential is, in the same way that the experience of life and consciousness might be contained unsung within matter.